Good morning, everyone. We want to welcome you um, to the Miami Dade Transportation Planning Organization's third Smart Map 2050 Long Range Transportation Plan Virtual Community Workshop. My name is Elizabeth Rockwell, and I'm the TPO's Chief Information Officer. I'm going to be your main guide as we move through today's conversation roadmap. So, on the next slide, we're going to go over the rules of the road. So basically this virtual workshop, which you just heard is being recorded and also is gonna be shared on the, the, um, the TPO's YouTube channel afterwards. So we will be sending out information for that when that recording is available. All attendees, you all will be uh, remain muted throughout the workshop. And then if you have any questions or comments, you can use the Zoom webinar chat feature throughout the workshop. And then of course, if you experience any technical difficulties, you can contact the number on your screen, 1-800-418-0524, um, so that someone from the technical support team can assist you. And on the next slide. So throughout the entire 2050 LRTP process, we want you to stay involved. We want you to stay aware of what we are doing and we'll, what we are accomplishing throughout our process, our development process. So on the screen in front of you, you have a QR code and that QR code will take you to the Miami Day TPO LRTP website, which is also listed right there. One more thing that we wanna kind of ask you to do. So we know most of you have social media sites. So if you see something out in the community in Miami-Dade County, and you want to kind of maybe have this addressed, so take a couple of shots of it and then write a little bit about it, of course, for characters, for your social media channel, and then tag us, hashtag Miami-Dade in 2050. Let us know that this is something that you feel could be improved in the future. Um, and also, don't forget, our, our handle is at Miami Day TPO. All right, on the next slide, I'm going to go ahead and introduce to you today the, the team that's going to take you through today's conversation. These are your guides for today. So we have Ms. Francesca Taylor. She's our TPO Program Development Manager, and she is the 2050 LRTP um, Project Manager. We have Christopher Rosenberg, who is our TPO Chief of Transportation Planning. And then we have uh, Marita de Vietas Landa, which is our Deputy Director of Transportation. So let's go to the next slide. So today's conversation roadmap. Again, the team is gonna take you on an overview of the Smart Map 2050. Then we're gonna go and do a recap uh, we're going to do a recap on the LRTP through the people phase, the performance phase, and the projects phase, which we'll go more into detail about that. Then we're going to talk about the funding priorities, and we're going to do a survey. And so make sure you have your phones out. You're going to receive a QR code that you're going to need to, you know, of course, get up right up on the screen. And we want you to be part of the survey. It's a lot of fun. We're going to then talk about next steps, the priorities phase and how we're moving towards that phase. And then again, we're gonna discuss how you can stay involved in this process. So without further ado, I'm going to pass the steering wheel over to Ms. Francesca Taylor, who will take you on the next phase. Francesca. Well, good morning again, and thank you, Elizabeth, for that introduction. Um, so on the, next on the next slide, you may be wondering, what is the LRTP. Well, the Long Range Transportation Plan, or LRTP, is a 25-year plan that is federally required by uh, uh, for the Miami-Dade TPO. It sets out our major transportation projects over the next 25 years, and it's updated every five years. So we began this process in 2022. Yes, that's right. It takes about two years to complete the process of creating the long range transportation plan. And our long range transport transportation plan is branded as Smart Map Mobility Accessibility Prosperity 2050. So for that two year span, we've broken up uh, that time frame into five phases. Those phases are shown on your screen on the right. Um, they include people, which represents you. Um, our citizens, our residents, um, and even our tourists uh, for Miami-Dade County. 
So we go out to where you are, meet you where you are, to gather your input on uh, the improvements for our transportation system over the next 25 years. The next phase is the performance phase. In that phase, we develop our goals and objectives. We'll talk about that process a little bit later today. The next phase is our projects phase. This is where we um, take into account all of the needs that we have in our area. We first do an, uh, we first analyze some of the congestion that already exists so that we can understand what are the, the projects that we need to improve the system. Once we create that list in the next phase, the priorities phase, we take that list and we um, also um, uh, forecast out the amount of funds that we'll have for the next 25 years. And we match those projects with the amount of funds that we believe we'll have available so that we can create what is known as the cost feasible plan. And this is where we find ourselves currently in the development process. And we really want to get your input. So we'll have a fun exercise later that we'll walk you through. Last but not least, our last uh, phase of this process is the policy phase. This is where we take all of what we've learned to the Miami-Dade TPA, TPA, TPO Governing Board um, for their uh, approval of our long-range transportation plan. And that is scheduled for summer of 2024. So on the next slide, let's jump into the first phase that I was mentioning, which is the people phase, our community out, uh, community workshops. So in the fall of 2023, we were able to visit each of our transportation planning Um, area your needs were in each community. The next screen, you'll see um, we delineate the vast um, uh, area that is Miami-Dade County into seven TPAs or transportation planning areas. Um, within these seven TPAs, we want to ensure that we are equitably distributing projects um, and that we also are, um, you know, meeting people where, where they are, uh, as I mentioned before. So we visited several um, we visited each of the, the TPAs in the fall so that we can understand what your needs are currently for the transportation system and then what your vision is for the future. The next slide, let's talk about each one of these in particular. First, we went to the central TPA. Um, the central TPA is home to uh, the city of Coral Gables, the city of South Miami, and also Miami Springs. Um, it is also home to the Miami International Airport. What we heard in the central TPA when we visited was the need for a bike pet connectivity and really bike pet protected uh, network. Additionally, some residents even mentioned that they were interested in seeing light rail transit along Douglas Avenue. In the next uh, TPA, we visited the north, uh, the north area. So the North TPA is home to cities such as Miami Gardens and the historic city of Opalaka. Um, not only did we hear a support for the North Corridor as part of the SMART plan, but we also heard that residents in this area are very interested in having sidewalks and protections to some of the public places such as schools and libraries in the area. Of note, um, the North TPA is one of the areas that we'll see an increase in, in employment over the next 30 years. So from 2020 to 2050, we will see, we're estimating an increase of employment at about 34%. And the next TPA was our South TPA. Um, so the South TPA is mainly, um, if you're thinking about Kendall Drive, Southwest 88th, all the way down to Florida City. Um, it's home to cities such as Color Bay, Pinecrest, um, and Homestead. In that area, we actually heard that citizens are interested in having more east-west connections. Um, additionally, some citizens are interested in having a one-seat ride, so to speak, from the South Dade um, area all the way into downtown Miami. And this, uh, I believe, will be um, accomplished in part by the um, South Dade Transit Way, the, the bus rapid transit on the, on the transit way. It's also worth mentioning that the South TPA is also an area that will have an employment increase between 2020 and 2050 at 35%, and also a projected population increase of about 26%. 
also of note for the South Day TPA is that we see in a median income of 74,000 um, per year per household. So that's very high considering uh, some of our other uh, TPA areas. Our next TPA is the Beach TPA. Um, and uh, the Beach TPA picks up Fisher Island in the south and spans all the way north to the county line. Um, it mostly encompasses the beach area, but then it also crosses over to the main line north of 163rd. When we visited the beach area, we went to the gate, we went to Gateway Park on October 17th, and we heard there that citizens are interested in managing capacity at specific intersections, um, but they're also interested in having um, more frequent or express services from the mainland to the beach. Also of note, again, the beach uh, TPA is a high growth area for, in, for employment. So we're seeing a 38% projected increase between 2020 and 2050. Our next TPA area is the West. So the West TPA is home to cities such as Kendall, uh, but it's also home to FIU. So one of the things that we heard from the participants uh, at our outreach there at the Westchester Regional Library is the need for um, connections to FIU, specifically micromobility um, solutions near, near FIU, and then of course, uh, more east-west connections as well. Our next TPA was the Northwest TPA, the Victor Wild Community Center. We visited there on October 19th. Uh, the Northwest TPA um, really hugs the, the top west corner of our county, and it includes um, communities such as Doral and Miami Lakes. When we visited it, when we visit, visited the Northwest TPA, we um, heard that there was a need or uh, a desire for um, micromobility and for um, a metro mover-like uh, facilities within, this, within the area. Uh, but then we also heard that people are interested in ensuring that there are safe pedestrian crossings over some of the, the major busy roadways. And last but not least is our Central Business District TPA. So we were able to visit the Overtime Performing Arts Center, a wonderful facility there. Um, one of the things that we heard um, in the central business district area was the need for safe mobility. So as we know, um, the central business district is one of those places where once you land, you can really go car free. You can park and move about um, downtown really safely. And most of us would do that, you know, as a pedestrian or, uh, or as a cyclist. Um, and we want to ensure that we have safe pedestrian crossings, safe bike lanes for people to move safely around the um, around the area. Of course, we would imagine that there is a high employment increase in the central business district, you know, considering the nature of, uh, of the, the land uses in that area. So that we do see a 43% in, uh, increase in employment, but we're also seeing an increase in, in population from 2020 to 2050, um, estimated at 36%. So that is a high level overview of what we've heard from each of the TPAs, but let's talk about also what we saw. So um, on the next screen, you'll see we were able to use artificial intelligence or AI um, to generate different photos. So our participants were able to actually type in different prompts into an AI image generator, and they created images for what they saw um, as Miami-Dade in 2050. So these are images on the screen now of what we see for our pedestrian and bicycle networks for 2050. And you see that they really do um, capture the vibe, the essence of Miami-Dade, but they also inspire us to a more connected network with safe bike lanes, safe pedestrian facilities um, that really get us from point A to point B. The next screen, you'll also see images around transit in Miami-Dade for 2050. I thought it was impressive that not only do we see things like light rail, and buses, um, trolleys, but we also think, see things like gondolas and even water taxis. So our uh, participants really thought outside of the box when it came to all of the options that are available to us over the next 25 years. On the next slide, 
Uh, you'll also see that we engaged our children in the community. So yes, our young students were able to uh, participate as well. And they saw things like Messi on a high speed train in downtown Miami um, or Hello Kitty stations and Legoland um, stations. So it was really great to get them engaged also on the future of uh, transit uh, and mobility in Miami Day in 2050. So with that, I will hand the steering wheel over to Mary Teddy so that she can talk to us about our performance phase and developing our goals and objectives. Thank you, Francesca, and good morning, everyone. Let's jump into our performance phase. So during this phase is where we set the goals and objectives for the LRTP. And think about the goals and objectives as the a steering wheel of the ship, and they guide the direction of the plan. On the next slide, you will see how we organize the goals and objectives for this plan. So first, I would like to invite everyone to scan the QR code on the screen using your trusty smartphones and camera so you can view the smart map 2050 goal and objective uh, fact sheet. So hoping everybody can get uh, your phones and get the fact sheet. As you can see, the theme of the LRTP is a smart map 2050. And as I mentioned by Francesca a few minutes ago, MAP stands for mobility, accessibility, and prosperity. So as you can see on the screen, goals are organized by this theme listed from the top to the bottom of the fact sheets. So let's go over them quickly. On the, the mobility theme, it is our goal that by 2050, our transportation system is safe, secure, reliable, and connected. Within the accessibility theme, we want our system to be innovative and climate resilient, which is very important. Then under prosperity theme, we desire an equitable and economically competitive transportation system. We also develop objectives for each goal by mode. So also let's go briefly to, throughout that. So from left, to right of the page, we start with the following modes. Uh, the e is smart transportation, which is the future of transit. Then followed by bicycle, pedestrian, and micromobility objectives, which aim to improve our first last mile connections. And finally, the highway and freight objectives, which aims to make the movement of our goods more efficient. The Smart Map 2050 goal and objectives has been developed through your input and the assistance of the transportation agencies on our steering committee. And now I would like to ask our friend and guy, Chris, to guide us through the Project Face. Yes. Chris? Thank you, Maritere. And it is a pleasure to be with you all this morning. My name is Chris Rosenberg. I'm the Chief of Transportation Planning for the Miami Dade TPO. We'll be walking through the projects phase of long range transportation, which includes the congestion management process, needs development, and scenario planning. So I'm happy to begin with our congestion management section on the next slide. And uh, when you see this map, it should come as no surprise to you. Our system is very congested. And as you could probably tell by the data that Francesca presented on our census forecast for population and employment, it is going to be happening in the future as well. So our system is congested and will continue to be congested. Um, that is a reality and it's something that whether you live in Miami-Dade County uh, or you come in for work and leave in the afternoon, uh, your PM and AM peaks are very, very consistently congested, and your travel time reliability is something that gets impacted. So what is travel time reliability? It's something that we did in our data analysis of the congestion of the system to basically forecast how long your delay is in an average manner. So if you're coming anywhere in or around Miami-Dade County during the PM peak hour, 
you can expect reliably a 22 minute delay beyond the posted speed limit signs and what you could expect based on that, that data point. However, if you're going into the downtown urban core in downtown Miami, your average delay is 35 minutes. Uh, so what does that say to us? Um, when you're trying to go from point A to point B, and let's say you had a one hour expected time based on the posted speed limits, you're going to be 35 minutes late. Um, so that is something that we deal with and we live with uh, every day. And it's posted, uh, you know, speed limit signs are not something that we can rely on to, to factor our travel time. We have to basically build in a buffer. Uh, so what we had to do was forecast that out into the future and build that into our planning process uh, so that we could tackle the most congested and uh, the, the corridors in the, in the system that are congested beyond just the PM peak and the AM peak of travel. Uh, and also, we had to basically start thinking about what the alternative mobility options are. And that's something that we presented to the public in our public outreach uh, workshops. We showed them the congestion system and we asked them questions about what they would see as the needs of their community based on their lived experience. So going into the next slide, we'll begin talking about how we put together our needs plan. Next slide. So during our needs development process, as we mentioned, uh, and Francesca walked you through all the seven transportation planning areas that we visited throughout our community, we asked them exactly that. We asked them to put in project ideas. Uh, they were able to use our needs assessment tool that we developed with our consultant team so that they could go onto a computer or they could even draw it onto a map about what types of improvements they could see in their neighborhoods, whether it's uh, somewhere they live, where they work, where they play, somewhere that they experience transportation issues that they would like to see improved. And what we saw from the community was a breakdown in types of projects that were very heavily leaning towards multimodal first last mile connections and transit. So that's a very good indicator that our community is keyed in, their lived experience is telling them that we need to start investing in projects that give them alternative means of mobility. Um, so this is something that was not a surprise to us, but that was basically consistent with our projections. And in the next slide, you'll see how that combined when we combined all of our public outreach with our transportation um, technical partners. Now, again, we have to maintain our system. We can't let our roadway system fall apart because that'll make things uh, exponentially worse. So what we saw was, again, very good indications that although we still have very high investments in highway, which is required, um, we also see an increase in the multimodal and transit type investments. So there's consistency amongst our public and our transportation partners so that when we put together our needs assessment and have to start refining it into a cost feasible plan, which we'll get into in the next slides, um, we're seeing consistency amongst our public and our transportation partners. Next slide. So what do we do with all that data? So uh, between our transportation partners and our public outreach, we received over a thousand projects uh, for the next 25 years for our consideration to put together a needs plan. Now, what happens with the needs plan is we need to put those project ideas into different buckets or scenarios as you see on the screen in front of you. The first scenario or bucket is the smart step scenario. What this does is it put, puts a heavy emphasis on first and last mile connections. So those bicycle and pedestrian or micro mobility type connections to get you from point A to point B or to connect you from uh, your home to a transit facility or a transportation hub, that is what smart step focuses on. The second scenario is smart program plus. This is the future of transit as we walked through with the e-mass e transportation. There is a heavy emphasis on transit. Um, for smart freight, this is the economically focused scenario, and it is to increase and expedite freight delivery. So we have more of a focus on the economic aspect and to make freight and goods and service delivery more efficient. And last but not least is our smart tech scenario. In this one, there is a heavy emphasis on the innovation and implementation of transportation technology of the future. So, um, you know, we see a lot of new and exciting developments in our transportation industry and in the, the, the means of movement today, but what does the future hold? Um, that's what we're trying to really drill in on for this scenario. Next slide. 
So what we had to do with all those scenarios is basically see how do they move the needle independently. Uh, our baseline for assessment is our existing plus committed network. What is that? That's basically everything that we are living with right now. So all of the projects that have been programmed and are in effect today is our existing conditions. Uh, added to that is our 2045 cost feasible plan. So we're developing a 2050 long range transportation plan for 2050 and 25 years into the future, but we have an adopted 2045 plan with projects that go out that same horizon year. So the baseline is the existing system today plus the committed projects that were already decided in the previous plan. That is our baseline. So building off of that, Smart Step, or our first scenario, has the most impact on safety, security, and reliability of our system. Smart Program Plus has the most impact on connectivity. Smart Freight, as I mentioned before, has the most impact on economically competitive goal and objective, or the economy in general. And Smart Tech has, by no surprise, the most impact on innovation in our goals and objectives. Next slide. So here's where we get into the fun part. We are going to ask you to put together your own little cost feasible plan based off of uh, the ideas that we've presented to you. And uh, I'd remind you all to please pull out your smartphones if you haven't grabbed them yet. Uh, go ahead and jump into the QR code link. It will take you to Slido where the survey is open. And we're gonna begin asking you a few questions on the next slide. So we'll give everybody just a minute to pull up your phones and scan that QR code. You can also go to slido.com and join us in that survey. Um, so we'll just let everybody get, I'm gonna do it myself uh, with you guys just to get everybody a minute to get in there. And it's really quick. So for me, I am already in. Yes, and you'll need our, access to Slido for the yes. next few questions. Yes, so our first question is, what future technology do you think will be the most useful to help make our transportation system more efficient? And I'll walk you through what these responses are. The first one is electric vehicles. They're out there today. A lot of people have them already. Um, the second is transportation network companies. And what we're asking for in this is the rideshare companies, so the Ubers and Lyfts of the world. Third is connected vehicles. This is more so for information sharing and connection to the system itself. So by Bluetooth, by whatever the future holds and what that uh, connection means. Four is the autonomous vehicles or fully autonomous vehicles. And last but not least is the urban air mobility. So we're seeing participants respond. And this is a ranking question. So you can either click in the order that you uh, would like to see the investments, or you can actually drag and drop each response independently. All right, we're getting some answers. And remember, you can always press edit response and change your responses if needed. Yes, good point. Thank you, Francesca. All right, looks like, like we've got 25. There's still some people ranking, but so far electric vehicles are in the lead. Transportation network companies. So it looks like uh, folks are wanting to invest in known technologies that are already in the works. All righty. And I can take electric vehicles as not just by, you know, the, the vessel itself, but also in the infrastructure uh, related to electric vehicles. Obviously, there's still quite a bit of work that needs to be done to get that infrastructure in place so that there's the charging capabilities across the board, uh, not just in the, the technology of the vehicles themselves. So consider that in your response. And I'm sure many of you have already done so. All right, Francesca, we want to give this one just another minute. Looks like there's a couple more yes. people answering. Yes. A few and more thank people you all answering. for your answers. Yeah, this is great responses. Great, uh, great data that we're collecting in our survey. All and right, electric vehicles remain steady. Yeah, electric vehicle stayed number one the whole time. So um, we'll go on to the next question. Thank you for your participation. All right, next question. Now here's the fun part. 
uh, we're going to ask you to put together a cost feasible plan in a much more micro fashion, obviously. Uh, but for this next activity, what we're going to do is we are going to hand you $100 in stars. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to ask you to invest those stars. So you have a $100 budget. Each of those stars is worth $10. And we're going to be asking you uh, questions over the next few slides to allocate your stars accordingly. Okay. So Francesca, uh, I think we, we want to remind the folks here to try to stay within their budget of yes. $100, $100 in stars. Yes. And remember, you will be asked on each screen to allocate those stars. So uh, if you choose to invest heavily on the first screens, remember how much you have left. And yes. then we'll see how we land at the end. Yes, um, yeah, $100 over the next four questions. So budget accordingly, as Chris mentioned. All right. I think we can get started. Um, if you haven't already done so, this is a really fun one. And we're going to ask you to invest. So on the first one, how much would you put in in stars in the smart step scenario? Again, we walked through this one, but this one is the scenario that prioritizes the connections for first and last mile solutions. So rank based on how many stars. Each star is $10 out of your $100 budget. Yes. And I see a few people allocated $90 out of their $100 total budget. So yeah. just want to remind you that for the next three questions, you'll have $10 to invest. And somebody did ask in the question if we could give them a heads up on what the four scenarios are. So the first one's Smart Step. The next one is uh, smart, smart, smart Plus. Plus. The third is Smart Freight. And the fourth is Smart Tech. So there's a little bonus information. Yes, those are the slides that Chris just went over uh, not too long ago. Yes. So, so far, it looks like on an average, 35% of our budget is being asked to be invested in this scenario so far, so far. But I know a lot of people are still are still dropping their stars in. And I would say the highest percent is three stars or $30. 40% of you would, would invest 30% of your budget in first and last mile connection. Yes, it looks like the average is about 3.8. So we would invest um, around $30 to $40 out of our $100 budget as a group. All right. I think we can move on to our next scenario. Keeping in mind your budget, guys. All right. Smart Plus. So on a $100 budget or STARS, how many stars would you invest in Smart Plus with a focus on the expansion of transit in our community? Okay, keep in mind what you have remaining. And again, you can edit your response if you need. Yes. All right, it looks like this one's a little bit higher so far than the last scenario. And I don't know if folks are are, are cognizant or, or thinking about the, the level of cost associated with projects in this uh, scenario, but it seems like they are, um, you know, level of cost as far as first and last mile connection versus an expansion of a transit system, something to consider in, uh, in how you invest, but we will leave it to you. This is your cost feasible development. All right, it looks like we've got all our responses in, and this one is a four. Uh, so four stars is the highest average for the investment here in the Smart Plus scenario. Let's move on to the next one. Smart Freight. And as a reminder, Smart Freight is the one that is most impactful on our economy. So helping our goods get from the um, processing centers to our front doors whether that be by making sure the roadways are uh, more seamless for 18 wheelers to move, the curbside improvements that would be required for those delivery cars and delivery drivers, the future of freight, um, you know, all of those things are in this bucket. Yes. How do we get the lettuce to the grocery store? Right. And it looks like we're, we're pretty consistent on the lower scale so far in our responses. 
but it's the economy guys we 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 you know there's a lot of competing needs that that's the point we're trying to uh to to put across here everything is important right but how do we reflect that in our budgeting process and how we prioritize everything is definitely important we would like to have it all but how much of your budget is left All right, I'm going to give just a, a couple more seconds here for folks to answer. But so far, uh, two is the highest response, or $20 out of your budget would be invested in smart freight scenario. And I think our poll is about to close. If you haven't gotten in, get your last minute response. And it looks like it's holding. So uh, yes, the... The average is 2.1. So let's move on to the last scenario. How much money do you guys have left? I hope you're keeping track. How many stars? All right. And then our last scenario is smart tech. So this is the future, the 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 Jetsons age of transportation. Um, you know, flying cars and um, you know, they're not to be facetious, there is. Uh, urban air mobility that is really rocking right now. There's a lot of advancements in, um, you know, uh, human-sized drones to to move people between Vela ports that are going to be popping up in urban development. Um, there's there's a lot of work that's happening here. So we're you know having to make sure that we are ready for a future ready Miami Dade County, and we would like to see how you would invest in focusing in on the technological advancements of transportation for the future. So, so, so far, this one is our lowest rank in our participants, but we do see people are still responding. And, and it's it not just like... the flying cars, but also the uh, robots that we see in downtown delivering goods and services at the lunch hour. Right. All right, let's give folks just another minute. Yeah, we have been seeing those little robots popping up. I mean, Francesca and I and, and the TPO, we are located in downtown Miami, and we see these little pink robots that are moving uh, food. They deliver food. They deliver documents. That is considered micro freight, um, technically. So that is a future uh, technology. So it's kind of bordering the line between two different scenarios that we have in our LRTP, but it's happening today. All right, and uh, just a couple more seconds to let folks answer and it looks like the highest percentage on this one is one star uh 60 percent of you have voted as a ten dollar investment out of your hundred dollar budget yes but a few right, people so... invested all of their money yeah to smart tech yeah yeah i did notice that but the average so far is 2.6 stars all right, and I think we can move on. And this is really the the slide where we are going to ask for your honesty. Okay, so next slide. Did you spend more than a hundred dollars? Moment comment. of honest. <laughs> yeah, we're we're looking for your honesty. Were you keeping tabs in your head of how much you had spent? How many stars you had allocated to the scenarios? So most of you stayed within your budget, and that's exactly what we have to do. Uh, we are, you know, not a hundred dollars, but we are given a revenue projection that we have to stay within when developing our cost feasible plan. So over the next twenty five years, uh, we have different resources: the revenue handbook. Um, our local, uh, you know, our local revenue projections, all of those projections on revenue, um, we have to stay within. So all of the needs that get submitted to us by our transportation partners, by members of the public, once we put those into the scenario buckets, we then have to be fiscally constrained and we are evaluated on the manner in which we display that fiscal constraint by our oversight agencies. So just like what you had to do on allocating on a much larger scale, we have to do that for the scenarios. So I'm glad all of you, uh, or the majority of you were able to stay within your budget. That was very, very uh, insightful to, to participate in that with you. 
Awesome. Thank you for these responses. This is very informative. I think what I saw is that um, transit would be heavily uh, invested in, followed by bike pet, freight, and then smart tech. I think someone uh, suggested in the chat that smart tech might be integrated into all of those scenarios, and that yes. is very well. Um, so that carries us into our next phase of the LRTP, which is priorities. So we really kind of conduct the exercise that we walk you through um, uh, on a larger scale with all of the projects that we have in order to create our cost feasible plan. So Chris, thank you for, for walking us through uh, that activity. Um, and we'll jump into what it takes for us to develop that cost feasible plan. So on the next slide, this is a high level overview of um, what it takes or, or, or the um, how we put together the cost feasible plan. The cost feasible plan or, or CFP is um, a required portion of our documents. Um, and on the next slide, you'll see that it is really us taking some of those project priorities that Chris mentioned. Um, so the projects that we received from the public um, and the projects that we received from our partner agencies, such as FDOT, um, uh, DCPW, our transit agencies, F, uh, SFRTA, uh, TriRail, um, taking all of those projects and putting them together, uh, but then also understanding the amount of funding that we have allocated over the next 25 years. And Chris mentioned, um, you know, one of the things that we do is we look at the federal funds uh, or we receive a handbook of the federal funds that we can expect um, to see over the next 25 years. We combine that with state revenue funds, um, and then also local funds uh, that may be available to us. Um, you know, we have a half penny sales tax, um, and then some additional funding resources. All of those combined, we at anticipate about $45 billion over the next 25 years. And again, this seems like a large um, amount of money, but, you know, we have to admit that some of our projects can be very uh, um, heavy in cost. Um, so we want to make sure that we're getting the most bang for our buck and that we're really um, attuned to what you as um, the citizens want and then what we uh, professionally know we need to improve uh, to maintain and uh, maintain our system. So once we have those projects um, allocated to our future budget, we actually have to go a step further and phase them in. On the next slide, you'll see that we put together what um, is called priority bands. So, so in our priority bands, we have about, we have four of them, priorities one through four. And I'm actually gonna go from right to left on the screen. So starting with priority four, that is our largest band. It's the projects that are a little bit, that are the furthest out um, in our cost feasible plan. So we anticipate that they will be, um, you know, starting to be implemented in fiscal years 41 through 50. Um, so the idea is that projects really kind of graduate from one priority band to the next. Um, so priority bands one through three are about five years each. Um, and so projects move from priorities four to three to two and then to one. Priority one is special because it is actually consistent with our transportation improvement program or our TIP. This is our five year planning document that really serves as a mechanism to get those projects out into the real world and into our built environment. So this is really showing you how our 25 year cost feasible plan actually becomes projects that we interface with uh, in real time. And to reiterate, these projects are consistent with the plan documents that we have from our partner agencies, such as the Department of Transportation, um, our transit agencies, um, uh, FDOT, Florida Department of Transportation, and many, many other um, partner agencies. So what's next? Um, on the next slide, you'll see that our next steps are to do some in-person pop-up pop-up outreach events. So we're gonna go to many of the schools here in Miami-Dade County, our colleges, universities, trade schools, to talk to some of the employment force of the future, um, to let them know about what we've done so far, continue to engage them in this process, uh, but then also uh, uh, ask for their feedback on the cost feasible plan and the development of uh, how we're assembling those projects. So we're going to finalize our um, 
our cost feasible plan, really get a handle on what our estimated revenues are and what those prioritized projects are so that we can create that plan for the future. And once we have developed our final cost feasible uh, plan, we'll take that to our Miami-Dade TPO, Transportation Planning Organization Governing Board. And that adoption of our full plan is scheduled this fall, fall of 2024. So we hope that you all stay tuned. And on that note, I'm going to hand the steering wheel over to Elizabeth Rockwell so she can drive us on home. Wonderful, Francesca. Thank you so much. And great job team, Chris and Maritere. Excellent job. Um, as you see here, here is everyone's contact information. Um, if you want to reach out to the team directly and regarding reaching out, we appreciate everyone who put information in the chat, as well as the Q&A section. Please know, I know that a few of those were addressed right on the spot. If your comment was not addressed, the team is gonna be sending us those that information and we'll be responding in kind. So thank you for that. So on the next slide, I just wanna say, listen, as we close out this virtual outreach event, um, on behalf of the Miami-Dade TPO team, we want to thank everyone for attending and participating today. We hope you found this virtual, this virtual workshop, actually, informative and engaging. And we encourage you to stay involved in the 2050 long-range uh, transportation plan development process. Again, here is the website. Here is a QR code that you can get onto the website. I know there was a question earlier about receiving the PowerPoint. We're gonna go ahead and not only is this going to be posted um, on our YouTube channel, but we're gonna go ahead and post the PowerPoint as well on the LR 2050LRTP website. And again, you are encouraged with your social media, um, you're out and about, like I said earlier, you see something that you wanna bring to our attention, put the hashtag Miami Dade, um, hashtag Miami Dade in 2050. And you know our, um, most likely know our handle as at Miami Dade TPO. So listen, the community's voice matters as we continue to shape the future of transportation in Miami Dade County together. So we really appreciate you being here with us this afternoon. And thank you again. And everyone, please have a wonderful afternoon and a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you and take care. Bye-bye.